Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X System Objects Interacting with Earth. Now, a screenshot from a video by the YouTube channel Pies and Cakes is shown below. Two bright objects leaving a trail behind them are seen moving across the sky. The sun is to the right and just off the frame. The objects are moving in the opposite direction to which the sun would move in the sky. Since it is extremely difficult to observe objects which are outside of the Earth's atmosphere during daylight hours from the Earth's surface, especially with the current haziness of the Earth's atmosphere due to chemtrails, and since the objects are in addition quite close to the Sun's position, it is likely that they are moving inside the Earth's atmosphere. And here we see the, the two objects. You can see they bright, they're obviously emitting light. They cannot be meteors because they're not losing altitude. They're just moving parallel to the Earth's surface, apparently. So, um, there's this trail. Now, um, chemtrail planes never look bright like this, so these cannot be chemtrail planes. And the brightness of the trail here, or the beginning of the trail, it continues on to this other trail, which is not as bright. It looks almost like a cloud, but it's uh, pinkish. Now, the objects are moving with the same speed and in parallel trajectories and are thus moving together, which indicates that they are a binary. But in binaries, which interact via normal strength gravitational attraction, we usually have the less massive object orbiting the more massive object, unless the, bin the binary formed recently from one object splitting into two. However, in that case, they should be following the same trajectory with one simply being slightly in front of the other. These objects are following parallel side-by-side -side trajectories instead, which suggests that they are not ordinary objects and are not attracted to each other or the Earth through the normal gravitational interaction, which immediately suggests that they are part of the Planet X system of stellar cores. And you may look at Article 244, entitled The Planet X System, Destroyer of Star Systems, for more details on that. Now, the objects are very bright and thus emitting light and cannot therefore be airplanes, and therefore these are not chemtrail planes. They cannot be meteors, as meteors streak across the sky and impact the ground very quickly, whereas these two objects are flying at constant altitude with a trail behind them. They are therefore most likely very small stellar cores inside the Earth's atmosphere. Stellar cores interact through a very weak gravitational field and are often observed hovering over a point on the Sun's surface, and they tend to get very close to the Sun's surface, within the corona or the Sun's atmosphere, but yet do not impact the Sun. Stellar cores may also be able to follow a parallel trajectory with respect to their host body as the 2007 stellar core traversed the Sun in the Sun's corona and thus maintained an approximate constant distance from the Sun's surface as it moved inside the corona or the Sun's atmosphere. And you see the 2007 stellar core here. This is in a U EUVI image, extreme ultraviolet, 304 angstroms. It's a stereo B image, um, so it's the stereo B spacecraft. And we can see the object here as it's just entering the corona. You can see part of it is still black. And the black part is, of course, outside the corona. The part that is red, it's red because there's corona between the object and the detector. The object was further uh, away from the sun so that it wasn't in the sun's corona, then it would look completely black against the background of the sun. The fact that it doesn't tells us that it is actually in the sun's corona. You can see it's red, 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 red because there is corona on the back side of the object. That is on the side that's facing the detector. Otherwise it will look black. And we know that it will look black because as it ex starts to exit the corona here, the part that's outside the corona is now black. You can see that as it exits, it goes black. 
and you can even see some of the corona behind it because the corona is of course in the shape of a shell so closer to the detector uh, the corona um, if viewed sideways does not go out as far uh, to the edge as corona that is right uh, on the edge of the sun so of course it will exit the corona if it's in front of the sun a little bit uh, uh, closer um, to the center of the sun than the edge uh, so we would be able to see the corona some corona behind it and part of it already uh, looking black you can see here you can see just the tip starting to exit the sun and you can see as it enters the corona how part of it can be seen against the background of the corona which is on uh, the the sun's edge so this object was clearly in the sun's corona it traversed the sun this object uh, was about 2.2 times the size of Jupiter so a very very large object and for more details on this you may look at article 143 entitled planet X traverses the sun irrefutable evidence now, in addition, the fact that uh, the two objects in figure one can be seen so clearly suggests that they are close to the observer on the Earth's surface and therefore inside the Earth's atmosphere. Since they do not behave like objects which strongly interact through the gravitational force, they have to be stellar cores. And the fact that they are bright and have a trail indicates that they are drawing material from the Earth's atmosphere. These objects are most likely bright for the same reason that a comet develops a coma, that is ionization of gases. Ions recapturing electrons is of course what causes plasma to emit light. And for more details on that you may look at article 169 entitled Planetary Formation, Comets to Planets. Now the objects are obviously emitting light from the comas. Uh, which is the atmosphere around the nucleus of a comet. And this shows that the objects are electrically charged or, or charging up in the Earth's atmosphere. Since the Earth's ionosphere is the most charged part of the Earth's low atmospheric layers, it is possible that the objects are moving through the Earth's ionosphere. Since the objects seem to be very small in comparison to the size most stellar cores seem to have, since um, as they seem to be actually in the Earth's atmosphere and they look so small, we can presume that they are actually small. So it's possible that either these are just extremely small planetary or moon stellar cores, i.e. the core part of what is left of what was once a live planet or moon, or they are stellar core debris. The stellar cores are known to share their outer layers as the blue stellar core shared outer layers of material which gave it a striped appearance within a few months. In addition, it has become obvious that the inner solar system is full of debris floating around and looking like either black or white dots in satellite images. As you can see, this is the blue stellar core. It was observed by Scott Sion through his telescope uh, in May. I believe it was May 12, 2017. He took a picture of it. As you can see, the object looked uh, has stripes. Uh, it does not look like a neat object. As you can see, um, there's this hole developing there because the object is shedding this material uh, that makes up its stripes. And you can see this material floating around the object here. It's just floating around. And this is uh, outer layers of uh, this very large object was so about a third of the size of the sun. So um, you can see all these uh, little specks of whitish material that was making up those stripes floating around. And the fact that this material is just floating around shows you that it's not gravitationally attracted to the object. Since when would you expect uh, the Earth to start losing part of the crust. You wouldn't expect that unless the crust was no longer attracted 
to uh, the core of the planet. And this seems to be what's actually happening here. These objects have such low gravitational energy that the gravitational field is extremely weakened, so they cannot even attract their own material, and they lose it in this way. And we can see the stellar core um, a few months later. When was that? I think it's July 26, 2017. Also uh, photographed through a telescope. Uh, this time by someone in Germany, and we can see that it's lost most of that material. We can actually see how uh, that the object's definitely a solid object. You can see the grooves uh, in the surface of the object, so it has to be solid. And that tells you what this is. This is basically the core of what was once um, a celestial object. and. Uh, obviously most likely a star because it's so large and as I've explained before stars and planets are not that different they all have a core a solid core and um, but stars are have more energy and are able to produce more light in the atmosphere and in addition stars are able to produce a solar wind and to have uh, nebula rings like Saturn does but, uh, and planets do not have nebula rings. They don't have the energy to produce those. Uh, but otherwise, they work in a very similar way. So uh, we can also see the debris in images like this. This is a stereo core 2 image, uh, stereo A, from November 30th, 2017. And you can see this object here within um, some corona coming from the sun. And you can see all, all these specks, all these little specks everywhere. And sometimes in uh, certain images, you can see that these specks seem to be buffeted. Uh, whenever the sun has a CME, they seem to be pushed away from the sun. Lots of them seem to come from the sun. So these are actually either very small stellar cores, what's left of moons and planets perhaps, or small moons and planets. That's the actual cores. Or, and then we have the larger ones that are most likely what's left of stars. And these uh, specks, uh, I like to call them, could be debris as well, could just be that uh, it's the, the material that they shared, uh, especially if they are extremely, extremely small. Now the strength of the gravitational attraction an object is able to exert on other objects is dependent on how much photon or gravitational energies inside the particles that make it up. And you may look at article 210 entitled Stellar Core Gravity Tidal and G is not constant. The shared debris seen above obviously has zero gravitational energy. So in order for the objects moving through the Earth's atmosphere seen in figure 1 to be stellar core debris, they would have had to absorb gravitational photon energy from the Earth so that eventually they would be able to weakly uh, be attracted uh, or attract other celestial objects. In this case, they would start orbiting a celestial object from afar at first and then slowly spiral in toward the object, i.e. the orbital radius would slowly decrease. So uh, here we see again the two objects. It's another screenshot of that. You can see the, the trail behind it. And this is uh, likely to be material that uh, this object is absorbing from the Earth. As you can see, it's it's not as bright as the trail close to the head of the object, but um, it's possible. I think it's very likely that there is light emission, therefore ionization in that trail. As you can see, it looks quite different from what clouds look like. So, in conclusion, two objects moving through the Earth's atmosphere in a path parallel to the Earth's surface and with colored gaseous trails behind them appear to be either very small planetary stellar cores or stellar core debris that has become attached to the Earth and is drawing energy from the Earth and matter from the Earth's atmosphere. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.